Prompting is text, right? It's something you do on a keyboard. Actually, there are better ways to do it. Images are a fantastic key ingredient that go with some of the best prompts to give you quick insights, fast marketing outcomes, points of view, useful stuff. This video is going to show you some use cases for adding images to your prompts. Okay, here we go. Our first use case is just to get a quick caption, which might be useful for a social media post. We're going to be at Zookeepers. We work at a zoo, we're doing marketing for a zoo, and we've got a picture of a kid and their dad feeding a giraffe at a zoo. Okay, this should be a social post, right? For sure. But what should it say? I don't know. I could take a minute, think about it, write something. But let's just give it to AI and get a, get a quick head start, okay? So I upload the picture. I'm going to use ChatGPT. You can use whatever model you like. And I'm going to put in this short, simple prompt. There's the picture. There's the prompt. Your goal is to make an engaging social media post about kids visiting the zoo. Write five possible simple captions for this image. Make them funny, make them memorable, make them unexpected. Add whatever words to that prompt that are aligned with your social strategy, with your tone and voice, with your brand. Okay, what do we get? Comes back, hmm, not too bad. That moment when you realize you're the snack, not the feeder. Zoo, hashtag zoo fun. Uh, it's okay, right? It's not too bad. It's a good, it, it's a... Uh, uh, it, it's better than the blank page. Okay, we'll keep going. Next method, probably much higher value. If you do anything paid and you buy an ad and the visitor sees the ad and clicks on the ad and lands on the page, the likelihood that they stay on the page has a lot to do with whether they see what they saw in the ad. The alignment between the ad they clicked on and the page they land on is a powerful impact on your bounce rates and engagement rates and conversion rates. So that alignment between ads and landing pages is key Let's see if AI can help us with some recommendations if we give it both. Two screenshots, one of the ad, one of the landing page. Here we go. We're targeting zookeepers. We are selling primate food, gorilla biscuits, it's a thing. Uh, and we make an ad and the zookeeper sees the ad, the zookeeper clicks on the ad, and the zookeeper lands on this page. Let's upload both of these. There's the ad, there's the landing page, uh, and here's the prompt. Review the PPC landing page and its core PPC ad and its corresponding landing page. Evaluate how well the ad and the landing page align. Next thing that happens, it comes back, gives us a pretty good analysis of these criteria we gave it. It says the ad promotes the food, but there could be more consistency in labeling in the ad and then the landing page. Okay? So then in the analysis, it comes back and says, yeah, there's, uh, you should adjust the header of the landing page to better match the ad's messaging. AI, it's found a, a, a gap, right? It spotted something. And if that works, you could save a lot of money, right? And in, in, uh, you know, by improving your PPC ad and landing page efficiency. Let's do another one. Accessibility. We are a company that builds zoo enclosures, and we've got a page about building zoo enclosures. The page is called Our Services. It talks about project management. It talks about uh, design, the, you know, manufacturing installation. I see a lot of issues with this page, actually. I mean, mostly the copy is vague. It doesn't prominently mention zoo enclosures. But what about just accessibility? There are aspects of accessibility that can be reviewed with a simple screenshot. Other parts of it, you need much more. This is a cursory, superficial look, honestly, but it's a very quick point of view. I'm going to give a full page screenshot of that page to ChatGPT uh, and tell it to evaluate it on a couple of criteria. Color contrast, that's important. Colorblind accessibility, are there issues for people with colorblindness? Text readability, okay, this is not going to get us to WCAG AA compliance, <laughs> but it is, it, uh, it, it's a fast way to spot issues and uh, maybe it'll be a useful point of view. Let's see what we get. Ah, it comes back and starts evaluating it against all those criteria. Color contrast, it gave us a three out of five. Right? And actually, if I ask it to make a chart, it will go ahead and make it an entire chart for me. Um, again, it's just another point of view. A real accessibility pro would be necessary to, to make this you know, much more compliant. It gives good confidence that this is going to work for everybody. Okay, uh, analytics. Ugh, it's a big topic, lots of data. You know, How do I get my insights? Uh, so if I make a chart or a report or a table in GA4, uh, what are the best insights from that? How can that influence my content strategy or my you know, conversion opportunities? I'm using the page path report. I've got a nice long date range. Uh, I'm choosing, the, in the first drop down above the first column, I'm gonna change that to top to page title because that gives me an idea of the topics. And in the second column, I'm gonna choose session source because that's gonna tell me where people came from to get to that URL. 
Sure, let's add a filter. I'm going to take out direct because I can't really make good decisions from direct. That's kind of the everything else bucket, not that useful. And I'm going to filter to just through the blog. You can see my filter there on the right. But this screenshot shows the performance of all of my content in all of its channels. Certain content performs better in certain channels. So it has advantages. Here. That topic has an advantage here, has a disadvantage there. So knowing the, the fit between topics and channels is a great way to do better, do better marketing. Uh, so all I need to do is take a screenshot of this now, right? And then upload that to ChatGPT and ask it for some analysis, right? We're looking to improve performance by aligning topics with channels. It comes back and suggests new topics and where to promote them. That is content strategy. Uh, it says this topic might be useful in search because it aligns with a keyword. This topic might be better in social media because it could be kind of visual. Uh, this content might, be, might seems to be aligned well with the things that have worked well in our newsletter. Interesting point of view. Fast analysis, screenshots, Google Analytics going straight into ChatGPT. What about a product description? You're doing e-commerce. Take a picture of a product, give it to ChatGPT right from your camera. In fact, the, uh, the ChatGPT app has like a camera button on it. Take that picture, upload it to ChatGPT, and ask it to write the product description, or at least the draft of a product description. Here's a fun example. Uh, we have some swag. It's an umbrella. We're giving it a, uh, away at our conference. Shh, don't tell the attendees. I haven't told them yet. Here's the prompt. Uh, you are an e-commerce expert skilled in uh, uh, writing compelling product descriptions. Your writing combines persuasive language, lightheartedness, and cognitive bias to, con to drive conversion rates. Uh, I'm providing an image of the product. Write a brief, engaging product description for an e-commerce website, followed by a concise bullet list. I want a bullet list highlighting the key features and benefits. It comes back. Not too bad. What do we think? Stay dry in style. You get the idea. For the last use case, I want to show you how to compare your homepage against a competitor's homepage from the point of view of your target audience. Okay, we're a cooking class and we're targeting uh, event planners and meeting planners at companies that want to bring their teams for a little team building exercise uh, at a, uh, a cooking class. Now, I'm showing you Chopping Block, which is a beloved brand in Chicago. People, This is a famous place that everyone goes to for events and for classes. It's a retail space and an education center. Super fun. Okay, but does this work for our persona? Uh, to know, to understand this from their point of view, I'm going to first use a prompt to build that persona. It looks like this. Build me a persona of a meeting planner at a mid-sized professional services firm. They're responsible for creating engaging events that prospects and employees love. They're looking for a place to do fun team building. List their hopes and dreams, their fears and concerns, their emotional triggers, and their decision criteria for choosing a place for a cooking class. I don't know this target audience. I have not done yet the research, but I'm going to assume that this is mostly accurate because this person wants to make memorable experiences. They're trying to create a reputation. They're worried about wasting their budget and negative impressions. Uh, so it gives me a good sense for that. Now, I go to the page. I take a full page screenshot of this page. I'm using a plugin here called Go Full Page that captures the full image, which I can then upload to ChatGPT. This is what I've been doing the whole time, by the way. Just use a plugin, or better yet, use TechSmith's Snagit, which, which can capture anything on your screen anytime. And then I upload that to ChatGPT along with this prompt. Uh, I'm giving you a web page, uh, create a table with two columns. In the left column, list their important needs. In the right column, list their, um, the extent to which the page aligns with their information needs and their decision criteria. And it comes back and it gives me a point of view of how well we did on that page against the persona's needs. Interesting. So that might immediately give me ideas for how to better improve the page, where to add some social proof, or did I fail to address an objection or answer a question? Very, very useful AI-powered gap analysis on key pages. Fantastic approach to conversion optimization and fast. Uh, now to actually understand how this is in the context of my persona's point of view, what are the competitors doing? Here's some other one. I don't know this company at all. Betty's. It looks like a baking class, kind of a 50s themed baking class. Perhaps a competitor if the meeting planner is considering chopping black versus someone else. So again, I could take a full page screenshot of this and now give this also to the persona in the same conversation. It's already evaluated uh, the, the chopping block page. So now I can take this, download this page, upload that as a second page to ChatGPT. There's the screenshot. I'm giving you another web page. Uh, create a matrix that shows them both against each other. Draw it as a color-coded heat map matrix. A few prompts later, I finally get it working. It's pretty interesting. This is a heat map matrix that compares our page to their pages. 
and the extent to which we satisfy the persona's information needs. Not best practices, not my opinion, but based on the persona's point of view. It's really a better way to use AI. Give it pictures, give it screenshots, give it any, upload something with the prompt. It can see what you give it. And you're very likely to get insights quickly uh, based on an asset or based on a report or based on a web page. Andy from Orbit Media, hope this is useful. We're doing lots of content here to help you get better results from digital just using AI, SEO, content strategy, GA4. Uh, and if you found this useful, feel free to pass it along to a friend. We'd appreciate it. Thanks again. See you next time.